समर्पित करता हूं आप सबका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद भारत माता की भारत माता की In 2019, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi introduced a health insurance scheme targeting 500 million low-income individuals, providing coverage for critical illnesses. With its extensive coverage, this program stands as the largest public health insurance initiative globally. Typically, public health policies receive relatively little attention compared to other government initiatives. This program, however, brings hope to the impoverished population throughout India by providing them with access to free health care this is particularly significant considering that a large number of india's poor currently depend on approximately 1.2 million unlicensed doctors for their medical requirements despite being the world's sixth largest economy India's healthcare budget constitutes only 1.3% of GDP, significantly lower than the global average of 6%. As a result, India's public health expenditure stands among the lowest in comparison to other nations. Due to the shortage of medical and healthcare workers, there has been a significant rise in the number of unlicensed doctors, creating a lucrative career path for them. Bottles, assorted pill boxes and old syringes lay on cabinets and shelves that look as though they've never been cleaned. In front of the medicine cabinet is a man wearing a long-sleeved white shirt with slacks and thick glasses. He wears a stethoscope around his neck, looking extremely admirable. The remoteness and tranquility of the countryside may be what city people wish for, but it presents challenges for rural residents. Remoteness often translates into difficulties and high costs, while tranquility may equate to a scarcity of essential services and resources. They might have a roof over their heads, access to simple food derived from the surrounding natural environment and essential clothing, but lacking is one of the four factors that are most important to human life, healthcare. Private and public hospitals in major cities boast skilled doctors and modern technology, on a par with those in Europe and America. Access to such facilities is, however, limited only to urbanites and affluent individuals. Meanwhile, rural people severely lack doctors and healthcare facilities. The shortage of doctors is not, however, limited to rural areas. Even within cities, there are patients who face difficulties in waiting to see a doctor. Sometimes they have to buy medicine from a pharmacy to cure themselves. Indian pharmacies offer a wide range of medicines, available for purchase without a prescription, especially generic versions. Hence, it is unsurprising that individuals in remote and impoverished areas hold in high regard those who provide assistance even if they are not medical professionals, as they are seen as saviors. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. People who provide this kind of public health service are known as quack doctors. It's estimated that there are approximately 1.2 million nationwide. They have never attended medical school, nor have they been nurses or health workers. India is the seventh largest country in the world in terms of land area, with a population of over 1.3 billion. In this country, prosperity and wealth are concentrated in a few places, while poverty is widespread. Most people live in rural areas, 
lacking economic and educational opportunities. When people fall ill, they have no choice but to depend on the quack doctors. These makeshift clinics, often housed in old terraced houses, serve as treatment centers where patients seek medical attention throughout the day. The quack doctors examine patients with a seemingly skillful demeanor, utilizing a stethoscope to listen to their chests and a light to examine their eyes and mouth. After concluding the examination, these unlicensed doctors also prescribe medication to the patients. These quack doctors, which are everywhere in India, give the villagers hope for a cure. They have varying amounts of knowledge based primarily on individual experience and acquired knowledge. Yet they have the most important tool, which makes patients very respectful, prescribing medication. The most popular medications quack doctors prescribe to everyone for any condition are antibiotics. Quack doctor, if you see, he is staying in his locality and he is just taking that opportunity. He has got no degrees, nothing, some books, some these things and basically they copy our prescriptions. Okay, the basic thing they do. Suppose this is having a chest infection. This doctor is treating. He is getting four or five prescriptions. So this three medicines are lining up and he is trying in that way. You even leave the quark. If you go to the, the medical stores what we have, you tell them I am having flu, they will straight away give you some medicines. In city, not you don't have to go that far. Discretionary prescribing of medicines, especially antibiotics, to patients by quack doctors is their main source of income because the extremely affordable examination fee is typically around 10 rupees or approximately 12 US cents. I'm a patient of his bubble, Dostaka Gurni, Puritakoni, Artasuka medicine, the Ponta Sartaka Milie, Masse Amra, and including all Milie, Chatti, a pastor in Gutavari, maximum. But day, but day. Can a good man of Guri Bialaka Bujak and Ora Jeja there, Shetukuni. আমার যে চাপ আছে এত দিতে হবে এত দিতে হবে সেরকম কোনো চাপ নেই এটাই এবার যে মেডিসিনটা দিলাম মেডিসিনের পড়াটা নিলাম দিস কোয়াক ডক্টরস আর দা ডিস্ট্রিবিউশন পয়েন্ট ফর মেনি ফার্মাসিউটিক্যাল কোম্পানিজ ড্রাগ কোম্পানি রিপ্রেজেন্টেটিভস প্যাট্রোল রুরাল ক্লিনিকস টু কনভিন্স देम টু বাই देयर মেডিসিনস দেন দা কোম্পানি উইল গিভ अबाउट 15 টু 30 परसेंट অফ দা সেলস ভ্যালু টু देम Therefore, patients who come to get treatment from these unlicensed doctors are often given a large amount of drugs that they don't know and do not need to take. If a patient recovers from an illness, whether due to medication or other factors, quack doctors are instantly revered as almost godlike figures. The indiscriminate and unnecessary prescription of antibiotics is one contributing factor to India being referred to as the ground zero for the erosion of modern medicine. Nowadays our world is facing a huge problem, antibiotic resistance. Antibiotics have been used to treat bacterial infections in humans for over 70 years. They are however becoming less effective and may not have any effect in the end. The overuse of antibiotics causes drug resistance. Because the pharmaceutical market has got tremendous influence over mainstream healthcare workers' behavior. So, in order that, in order, uh, because of this understanding between the health, pharmaceutical market and the healthcare, uh, I mean, trained healthcare persons like me, uh, the overuse of antibiotics and overuse of drugs take place. And these people are basically copiers, blind copiers. So they feel that if a person like me can do this, they can also do that. Bacteria are constantly evolving to become resistant to antibiotics available to humans, while the new antibiotic development process is slow. The World Health Organization has warned that we are stepping back to a pre-antibiotic era in which more people will die from common bacterial infections. In 2050, or only 30 years from now, a bacterial antimicrobial resistance will kill more people than cancer. And it's already happening in India. Nearly 2 million people have died from antimicrobial resistance in India alone, according to the US Centers for Disease Control, or CDC. The public health system is inaccessible to most of the rural population, Quack doctors and antibiotics remain the only options for them. 
When India couldn't get rid of unlicensed doctors, one option they tried was to bring them into the system. In the small pavilion of a village, there were rooms full of young and old quack doctors. This is a weekly training session. The picture and sound of the doctor appear on the laptop screen placed on the desk in front of the class. Today's class is a review of the topic discussed last week. After an hour of review, the licensed doctor on the screen allowed these quack doctors to ask questions. Quack doctor training is done by a group of professional doctors. These doctors believe that when we cannot eliminate these unlicensed doctors, they should at least teach them basic knowledge about common illnesses. So the quack doctors can perform basic medical examinations and prescribe generic medicines to patients. We at Liver Foundation 10 years back thought that it's good to you know, give them some, some understanding because they are already in the work and tell them what not to do and then tell them what to do. So remember, always we tell them that you are not doctors. You cannot claim yourself as doctors because claiming yourself as doctors is is, is, is an offense, is a crime in terms of country's uh, regulations. This basic treatment education program has been criticized by many licensed doctors. They think that this project will not solve the problem. Indeed, it could add to the problems. When you accept the power, you are giving your life in that person's hand who doesn't know anything. But they just treat basic, basic thing. How can it harm to your health and life? See, when a patient comes with chest pain, that is also a basic thing. So you have to make your diagnosis first. He is having acidity, a muscle pain, or it is heart attack. If you cannot diagnose that, how can you refer, refer the patient? Next slide. And what they do, they give a combination treatment. Suppose you are having a heart attack, anything like that. They will give you five medicines. Any one will work. That is their strategy. The training program has faced criticism due to concerns that it may generate a false sense of confidence in quack doctors. It may lead quack doctors to believe that they can treat patients effectively based on their education, resulting in potential errors in their treatments. Ad additionally, there is apprehension that this situation could position quack doctors as trusted distributors for pharmaceutical companies. Antibiotic, it is very low. Maybe if I give amoxicillin, hardly a five rupees a tablet. Suppose they're launching a new one. Ferropenem is a new one. Maybe that has been launched. There's a costly antibody. There's a higher one. It has got less drug sensitivity. I mean, huge drug sensitivity, less resistance. That will work fine. But when he starts giving that medicine, because he's still magic with that medicine, that is a new one in the market that is curing almost everything. So using that is rampantly at the community level. And that antibiotic is killed in one or two years' time because the resistance is growing up. This thing happens. Despite the considerable controversy surrounding the training of quack doctors, the project has been operating for over 10 years. But unfortunately, after 70 years of independence, what I am telling you is ground reality. So you go to vast, deeply, you know, uh, difficult to access areas, the more dif uh, away you go from uh, the towns and cities, the more you see that people are, don't have access to a trained healthcare worker. It's worth noting, however, that not all quack doctors are willing to take part in this initiative. Becoming registered would subject them to regulations and require them to adhere to specific treatment guidelines based on their training. One crucial aspect is the control over the types of medication they can prescribe, limited to approximately 70 types, which leads to a loss of autonomy and income for quack doctors. The Indian Medical Association estimates that there are at least 1.2 million quack doctors across the country. These people operate clinics to treat patients in various communities and also provide off-site treatment services. Mobile phones provide a convenient and rapid communication channel between individuals and quack doctors. When people are too unwell to leave their beds, they can call a quack doctor to come and treat them at home. In a contemporary scenario, a quack doctor is providing a diagnosis and dispensing medication to a patient. 
Meanwhile, he receives a call from another patient and promptly prepares to go and examine them. Quack doctors possess essential tools, such as stethoscopes, blood pressure monitors and various medications. Within 10 minutes, he reaches the patient's house on his motorcycle. The patient lies in bed experiencing pain. He informs a quack doctor about his severe stomach ache and expresses a desire for an injection. The unlicensed doctor refuses until he diagnoses the ailment using a blood pressure monitor. With expertise, he applies pressure and touches the area of the patient's discomfort. Finally, he dispenses the medicine as the last step in the treatment process. What did you do? What kind of medicine you give him? I patient an antacid actor, a painkiller, a decolic, decolic painkiller. I have a painkiller, 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 a the quack doctor had another appointment to check up on a female patient who had called right after this case. Indeed, the quack doctor attends to numerous patients on a daily basis, similar to a licensed medical professional. The implementation of the health insurance scheme in India has begun, but it still faces challenges and requires time to overcome various obstacles. As long as there are diseases and a segment of the population consisting of impoverished individuals with limited education and restricted access to health care, unlicensed doctors will continue to be present in Indian society. After all, apart from relying on fate and prayers, what alternatives do they have available to them? <laughs>